Our first talk is Carl Leonard Rudolph from Leibniz. Whenever you're ready, you can just begin and remember to be on time. Um, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers. It's a really great um, meeting and live meeting. It's the first after two years. Uh, it's a really great experience. So we got recently interested to work on dietary restriction. And that is basically because um, we have to admit dietary restriction is the best proven, experimentally best proven intervention um, that increases lifespan across different species. So, but there's bad news. Um, as you know, there is increasing evidence that dietary restriction um, loses efficacy when applied to old um, animals. And that has been shown in mice. Um, this is work here on the left from Linda Partridge's lab um, on the reduction of mortality rates. And you see that lifelong DR uh, reduces mortality, but late life DR has very little effect on mortality. We have similar data on stem cell function. So when we put uh, mice on a dietary restriction, young mice, um, and then we transplant hematopoietic stem cells to assess um, the function to um, repopulate um, blood, we see a profound improvement in stem cell function in young mice after one month or three months of dietary restriction. Um, in old mice, no improvement whatsoever. So there, this loss of capacity um, seems also to affect um, dietary restriction mimetics, as we have heard yesterday from uh, Maria M. Oliver's lab. And there's also data on mice that metformin in, in young mice uh, elongates lifespan in old mice. It loses this capacity. So um, we decided to um, compare the response of young and old mice to dietary restriction. And I think the interesting finding we had when we looked at the body weight um, of young mice um, that are exposed to dietary restriction, you can see dietary restriction induces a loss of body weight. But then apparently something happens in the young. Um, they don't break the diet because we control it, uh, but they regain body weight and they stabilize the body weight. In old mice, this looks profoundly different. Uh, they lose body weight after dietary restriction. There seems to be an attempt to, to compensate, but they continue to lose um, over months. So there's a failure to stabilize body weight. When we look into the literature, it has been proposed um, that um, mitochondria function is actually um, induced and is actually necessary um, for the response to dietary restriction. And there is some evidence, especially in simple model systems, uh, in work from, um, from Risto and Sinter Cannon's lab, that showed that you need mitochondrial activation of ROS um, to um, uh, elicit a positive response to dietary restriction. And so, given the evidence that mitochondrial function declines in aging, um, we thought it may be interesting to test this hypothesis. Um, that the mitochondria react different. And so we compared here the mitochondrial activation two weeks after dietary restriction in defined population of hematopoietic cells, freshly isolated from bone marrow in mice that were exposed for two weeks um, to dietary restriction. What you can see in young mice, um, basal mitochondrial activity doubles, also maximum activity uh, is increased, by dietary restriction compared to ad libitum, in old mice, no such response, no activation. Um, and um, we then turned um, our uh, focus on the possibility to activate, to enhance the potential uh, capacity of mitochondria. And there was quite some interesting literature in the recent years that um, NAD is actually declining in aging and different mechanisms have been shown, DNA damage, PARP activation consumes NAD, telomere shortening consumes NAD. There is an activation of enzymes that degrade NAD in senescent cells and in old tissues and macrophages. And all this together leads to a reduction in NAD levels. And, um, and our works tested this hypothesis in mice and he replenished NAD levels by nicotinamide riboside and he showed Yes, you can activate mitochondria. This can be beneficial for stem cells. And the mice have even a little increase in lifespan. When you um, treat uh, in old mice at 18 months they started, you have a 6% increase in lifespan. And so we thought, you know, 
maybe this um, NAD repletion could also um, rejuvenate the response of mitochondria to react to dietary restriction. And uh, this is indeed the case. And I show this here. This is now again the seahorse assay I showed you before. Mitochondrial activity is measured two weeks after dietary restriction compared to ad libitum um, or after um, NR um, supplementation or after a combination of NR supplementation plus dietary restriction. And in young mice here on the left, all three treatments lead to an activation of mitochondria. Um, in um, old mice on the right, it's only the combination that has a capacity um, to activate mitochondria um, in these hematopoietic cells two weeks after um, treatment of the diets. And um, we find this interesting and we thought to test the hypothesis that this is also linked to the activation of health-promoting stress signals. And so we uh, used here a nanostring analysis um, of a focused set of um, 240 nutrient stress response genes um, where we looked at RNA level um, in hematopoietic stem cells two weeks after dietary restriction, what is the response? And what you can see here in the young, um, uh, many of the stress response genes are regulated two weeks after dietary restriction at the stem cell level. NR supplementation by itself in young does the same. In old, neither dietary restriction nor NR alone can do this response, can you know, induce this response. It's only the combination, only the combination that activates mitochondria, also only this combination that activates the stress responses. So we also tested beneficial effects. Um, we did this transplantation assay on hematopoietic stem cells. And um, here we treated now um, young mice and um, old mice um, with these different diets and um, for two weeks. And then these um, hematopoietic stem cells were extracted and transplanted into recipients after two weeks of the dietary treatment. And um, then we measure the engraftment and the repopulation capacity of the hematopoietic stem cells. In young mice, each of the diets improves um, hematopoietic stem cell function. DR or NR or the combination, it doesn't make a difference. The combination doesn't make it better, but all three diets are better than ad libitum. In the old, there's a little less function, as expected. DR doesn't do it, NR doesn't do it, it's only the combination. And so we have also now um, survival data. Um, here to be treated um, female mice, we have similar data um, also for um, older geriatric mice. Um, for the female cohort, we um, initiated the diet at 22 to 24 months of age. And we compare ad libitum um, to dietary restriction to NR to the combination of NR plus DR. And um, in this um, cohort size, um, NR and DR do not lead to a significant effect on lifespan. It's only the combination that has a profound, highly significant effect uh, on lifespan extension. 35% overall survival increase. So we think what this data show is that NR or DR alone induce mitochondrial activation and helps promoting stress signals in young mice. In old mice, DR and NR fail to induce such responses. Uh, they cannot activate mitochondria or stress signals. And um, the, um, the beneficial effects are, however, rescued by the combination. And so we propose um, that mitochondria activation itself is actually needed um, in response to nutrient deprivation um, to activate these health-promoting stress signals which in um, lower model organisms have been linked to ROS production um, of mitochondria. And so um, we want to test this hypothesis further and, and we thought um, that um, if that is true, then other di dietary restriction mimetics, which also target mitochondria function, mild inhibitors of mitochondria, should have the same effect. And so we turn to metformin which is a mild inhibitor of complex one. 
and which is known to activate mitochondria um, at, at pharmacological doses. And so, um, interestingly, when we apply metformin to old mice, um, here we have now a long time measurement of basal respiration of freshly isolated hematopoietic cells. Metformin treated um, uh, mice do not show an activation um, of mitochondria. However, the combination uh, with NR also leads to a similar effect like we see in, in dietary restriction, a doubling in mitochondrial activity. So we measured the, hem the, the stress response uh, in mice that were for two weeks on these different treatments. And in metformin treatment, hematopoietic stem cells do not activate health-promoting stress signals. Um, it's only the combination um, that has this capacity. And so with this, um, I would like to um, finish. Um, I thank my lab members. Um, Yulin Chen is instrumental for this study. Elias Amro has contributed and, and some others. And I want to disclose that we have filed a patent on, on some of the combinations that I have shown here. And um, I would also like to point out uh, that we have a meeting uh, coming up in October in Jena. Um, with our colleagues from Groningen is, uh, I think, a fantastic lineup. It's, it's, it's also a little bit of hybrid. Um, it's, it's online, but if, if somebody wants to travel, we can also try to bring you in, and I think um, we are still open uh, for applications, and so um, please contact us. Thank you all. Thank you so much for a great uh, presentation, very uh, stimulating. I, uh, there is a question, we have time for one question on Slack. Um, so there is a question from Wilbur Verme. In your data, it looks as if in old mice, the maximum respiration is already partially elevated. Could this be due to a protective response induced by aging? Yeah, that actually is true. We also observed that we don't know that. Uh, whether that is the case or whether as it indicates a little bit also uh, mitochondrial dysfunction. Mm. Uh, so that they use a little bit more respiration to maintain, you know, maintain. compensate for, yeah. for lesser efficacy of the mitochondria. Yeah. Yeah. Very interesting. We saw the same action in some premature age mice. So I think that's very interesting. So cool. <laughs> we will have to, to move forward. But okay. thank you so much for your presentation. Really great. Thank you.